he has spent the majority of his adult life working in the horse racing industry, first as a jockey, and then as a groom. He has been through all, and more in the tough game of horse racing, but has remained unwavering in his commitment to the sport, and the main source of his livelihood. Groom Cedric Hardware shares his life and time in horse racing with QuickGallop.com and its YouTube channel, The Quick Galloper. I see you have a horse here. Who is this horse? This horse is Green Gold Rush. Green Gold Rush. Yeah. He broke his he broke his maiden in one nineteen fractions, one nineteen flat. So you know from the beginning, he's a bitch, a boss, he's a killer. Because a few hours can do, don't bite me. Please. Leave, leave me alone, man. So look now. I'm getting a problem and run back one twenty five those times. And then he went over my muscular with problems. He turned over. But my owner bought him, Mr. Patrick Ellis, and his crew, PJP, you see? Patrick, John Preston. There's Mr. Sergio, my trainer. So we brought him in like, I said the 7th or the 8th, somewhere around there, December. And he has won two races, run a 4th and a 5th. But definitely, he's one of the most loving horses I ever worked with. Seriously. You're a groom now. Mr. Hardware, but yep. that's not where it started for you. Tell us where it all started for you. Well, How did you get involved in this sport? Well, my, my father used to work at Reynolds, Jamaica Mines, and he got sick. I used to go to Fern Cote High School. I was brilliant. I run third, second, and first. Three years, I never go below third. So when my father got sick, he didn't want to come in town, so I told him, Daddy, why don't you pay my intuition fee and let me stay at Fern Court? He did not. He took me to town. I live at 145 King Street, just below North Street, right with my aunt. So from there, I went and lived in Mountain View, 27 and a half. Mountain View, at the corner before you go to, I believe, Calabar School. So there was Trevor McKenzie, icon, good rider. I used to think when I saw Trevor, I, I thought I saw an angel. So my uncle told me that, um, Mr. Audrey, would you want to be a jockey? Because I was short. And that's where it all started. So my uncle brought me to Miss Cleggard. When I went to Miss Cleggard, there was, there was one of my, my father's foreman, Mr. Keith Murray. He was an assistant trainer at the time. So I went there. I love what I saw. The place was so cool, just like here. So kind, some blackbirds, it was so loving. I thought I'd been in heaven. So, there and there, that's where it started. When was that? 1963. 1963? Yeah. Was that your first introduction to horses? Not really. My grandfather was a blacksmith in Boston, in Portland. He used to show the racer. You know, his Portland racing started in Jamaica, in Boston, right? And then scattered all over the world. So, I did not really have a first-hand experience as a horseman, but it was in my blood. So I actually born as an horseman. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so you, you came to Miss Clickers? Yep. Mm -hmm. How did that transition go? How, how did it all unfold for you to become a job? Well, when I came to Miss Clickers, you know, there was Vassal Najir, there was Milton Gray, and Donovan Lindo. Um, Mr. Najir was riding already, winning races with Chanterelle and some of us, Hildon and then there was Milton Gray. And after Milton Gray was D. Linda. So after D. Linda was me, as an apprentice. I was, I was treated so good as an apprentice. Good food, good clothes, good bed. We were not pestered or tortured. We, were, we have everything our way. We get whatsoever. Miss Cleat went to town every Thursday. But after that now, Mr. March lives in Old Arbor and was a trainer, but he decided to leave the game. So he brought Richard De Paz, which is an Hall of Famer jockey. He brought Symphony and another horse, I believe, Henry Higgins, something like that. I'm not so sure, but so I was supposed to be um, a rider after Donovan. So Miss Kilgard put De Paz on top of me in that time. So I, I get a little set back there. Okay. All right. How long did you spend there and, and when did you get your jockey's license or your apprentice license? I rode 
I rode 1970. 1970, I got your license. Yeah, yeah. Bimbo ride 19. Emilio, no, say Bimbo. I want to be precise. Emilio Rodriguez rode 1970. But he rode earlier than us. He rode in March. I mean, I was on ride the same day, the 30th of October. You mean you started at the same time? Awesome. He write telegram and I wrote touch and go. I wrote second, he wrote third. But I was a better writer at the time. But of course. Of course. Of course. Yes. I'll be in here, come to my training and say, Mr. Ard, Mr. Murray, I want you to take care of that youth. Understand? Yeah. Him look good out of the gate. Five major, straight five. Get him busy, grab me up this thing. <laughs> I run second. How long did you write for? Months. A few months. Just a few you? months. Just a few months. And in that time, did you win any race? I, I won the Desert Queen. For Mr. Can you remember who won who you beat in that race? Of course I do. Sure, it have Madame Fury. I, I, bought, I beat Madame Fury, written by Albino. The pause was in the Iran Juke. I remember. <laughs> the history. Juke. Bravo was in there. Bimba run dead last. <laughs> that funny thing. So, I'm telling you, me being six all of him, Jackie. So that that basically was the highlight of, of your my ride. life. Of my life. No, I, I, I want to be a jockey, but I had to stay with him. He's my governor. Yeah, but when I could not go you, somewhere. Else. Stay you, where he is, down by the beach. Yeah, but what do you what were you doing? You swimming were horses. Oh, just swimming eating horses. fishes. Okay. Just like that. So you gave up riding just like that? I could, I never gave up riding, I just could not ride. Because he's my governor. You know the meaning of governor? He's totally responsible for my life. My, my mother had to sign me over to him. At, in those days, not like now. Mm -hmm. So that was 20 years. So I, couldn't, I don't know what I could have done in 20 years' time. I don't know, maybe I could have been a champion jockey. I love, I am so much in love with horses. I decided to be a groom. From, a, from early, I'm saying I want to be a groom. I want to groom racers. I love racers. And they love you also. They are very passionate, very friendly. So, when did you formalize that groom transition now? When did you? Most, but almost like 71. So I stopped riding, I stopped road, so I decided. I was working with Sidney Watson, Mr. Sidney Watson, down by Melvin Park. I had a little boy. And I was saying, if I am a jockey, I may not have money every week. So I want to have money every week to give that little boy, my son. So that's when I decided to groom horses. But I never regret grooming horses. I love being a groom. So you started out grooming with Sydney? No. I started, you cannot go to Miss Clear Sydney unless you're a groom. You have to be a horseman. You have to clean girls. So when I really becomes a man now, I started Mr. Watson. Okay. Yeah. And you worked with him for how long? A couple of years. Who were some of the horses you looked after? Ilos, Red Hot, a few more. How many races you would have won then? As a groom? Yeah. Those times? Mm -hmm. Not a lot, but I left to it impetuous. Okay. A that represent the country. Would that have been the best horse you, you would have groomed at that time? I love all of my horses. Yeah, man, but I mean, I don't have a best. I don't have a best horse. You don't have a best. No, no, I love all of them. I don't have a best horse. I ate, I ate to, to elaborate on one horse, because what we do is, if the horse is good, we tend to love him more than the one that's not good. But I love the one that is not good, so I, I share them equally. But really, I won with Wimbledon. Um, I don't want to tell no lie. 350 claimer. I won the Harry Jackson with him. That is a great stakes. Mm -hmm. from, from a claimer to a great stakes. So if I was going to say the best horse, I would say Wimbledon. But I love all of my horses. Mm -hmm. Everyone. Who would have been some of the other trainers you would have worked with over the period? Oh, oh, oh my. It's Castella. She loves me like cooked food. Fernando, Byron Davis. But most of all, Mr. Edwards. Nicholas Edwards, we won nine races in any straight off the bat as a, um, a fresh arm. He, he had just got his license. So when I went to him, we won nine races straight. Nine. Not with one horse, you know, six different horses. We had the chemistry. 
Yeah, so. But now, if I am to big up a trainer right now, I have to big up Mr. Sergio at the moment, the present and moment. And he is the trainer you're working with now? At the present moment. And I love him. And you're looking after how many horses here? Well, we got two foreigner babies, two year olds and Mr. Rush. Mr. Rush. Yeah. He's pleasant. He's very decent. When, when we got him in now, when we got him from the bushes, like over Miss Clear, they were saying, he's gonna kill you. He's gonna jump on top of you. Nothing like that. They just don't understand what he loves and what he likes. He's be very decent, lovely. I'm I'm feeling very proud. I got my PJP team, you see? Patrick, Joe, and Preston. They treat me good. Very, very good. Excellently good. About, about how many winners you would have had as a groom over the, all these many years? Countless. I'm a genius with horses. Horses love to so run for me. your countless genius number? Like, 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 I, um, 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 reggae princess. Mr. So Dickens, I try my best to win him at 250. I'm going to win with him two times at 350. Prince Adam, Uchten Jazz. When I got Uchten Jazz, he used to run like 60 yard, 70 yard length LAST last. And Mr. Dwight Chen have him, I weren't doing anything. And then Fullerton got him. So Mr. Davis, otherwise known as Baller, the jockey, he was the owner. So he sent me and you tell me to get the horse from over by Fullerton and I told him that Mr. Davis, this horse is a good horse but his tummy full of gas so what, so what I need, I said we need some gas medicine you know like gas enteritis or what have you and he did send some bottles, some gallons and that was the end of it straight to the top right I won a 350 race with him, you know, and he went to overnight and there was a horse by the name of Pasa Pasa, trained by Mr. Wayne de Castro. That horse was selling one to zero, maybe one to five or one to nine, I don't know. And I, I was so, I was so elated. I, I said, I'm Mr. Mr. de Castro, you're not going to beat me today, you know. I got seven to one with a jockey named Owen Bennett, they call him Cookie, I won. Grab him at the furlong post, yeah. So that was one of my good horses. Um, and sure. Prince Adam, sure. Wimbledon, all those horses. And, but what I, what, what I do with horses, you know, is a few groom or a few trainers do that. I like horses that not doing good. And you give him to me. I will try my best to make him a, a better, like better horse. horse. And it, it's been like that. You've been here for a long, long time. From 1963. Which is the best horse you have seen, in your estimation, race here at Cayman House? <laughs> well, 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 it's a shake-up. Shake them up for us. I can shake about five. Shake them. We got foreigners, we got local horses. For instance, there was one by the name of Viceroy. Harley mm -hmm. Those are very good horses. Very, very good horses. You understand? Element. Qualitex. But the best horse, pound for pound, would have to be Ramesses. That is the only horse as a two year old went to the top of the class and performed good. He was beaten by, I believe, none such. Or a kilowatt, one of those horses in the Gold Cup. But imagine you have a baby running against big boys. And doing well. Very well. I, I, thought, you, I thought he was rated like 128 in those times, almost. Third in the world. Because you can't get a two year run against old horses and do good, you know. And he had that amount of ability. So, pound for pound, there's a lot of great horses running here, you know. A lot, you know. I can't even count. I can't just say 40, 50. I can't tell you all of them because I've been around from that time. But What about jockeys? Jockeys? <laughs> yeah, we have, some, we have some great jockeys. Very good, good jockeys. Good, good local riders, but to my estimation, the best, the best. I love one Jackie personally because of my love for him. That's Hubert Barley. Just the way he portrayed himself, he's always tidy. He's never untidy on a horse. 
same length exercise, same length race there. It's very unique, it's very cute, but yeah, drawbacks. But the best one I see right now is George of Feeling. Him. The feel. Hmm. I'm calling him Arman Tree. Two best jockey ever ride on that track, not even Lester Pigat. Me ride with Lester Pigat, you know. But he's not good like Duffy. Because in them time, the Duffy have a shape movement. Get the rhythm from the ass. And him, him, <laughs> when, what, what he does, he, he does not move from the three, nor the two. Understand? When you are pushing and moving, he's not moving. So he's going to come at you like a ton of bricks. Yep. Because mm -hmm. there's something about race horse, you know. When you start to shut down, you know, and I am motoring, you cannot beat me. Right. You just can't beat me because you're shutting down fast and I'm coming faster than you. Right. So that's the way you rode. So, Mr. Ardware, sir, you have enjoyed your journey in race. Immensely. Totally. I want to cry. Love and you. How much and longer? I want to cry. How much longer do you think? You well, have well. I was born on the 23rd of October 1952. So in October, I will be 71 years of age. But look at you know. I want about 20 more years as a groom. I don't want to be a trainer. I love grooming horses. You see what my eyes do to me? You see pick me? Will never pick a jockey. No, he might pick the one that can. <laughs> yeah, serious. Thank you for watching another video produced by the team from quickgallop.com, YouTube channel, The Quick Galloper. Please stay on the channel for more enlightening videos on those involved in local horse racing. Please like, subscribe, and press the notification bell.